So good afternoon everybody and welcome to a Morris Federation online event and today we have Andrew Knight and um, Jenny and Mike Everett helping to host and I'd like to introduce uh, Barry and Jill Goodman who are going to teach us more about more quirky English customs. So handing straight over to Barry and Jill now, thank you. Thank you Pauline. Oh, lovely to see everyone. Right, we're going to put the screen share on now. Hang on, just do that first. So we got it. There it is. Right. There we Hope go. you can all see that. Smashing. Here we go. Right. Well, welcome to our second presentation. I know some of you certainly saw the first one. Um, this is some more unusual folk customs and traditions that happen around England today. Um, we're obviously Barry and Jill and we've been involved in the folk scene since we were at teacher training college and a lot younger. That's us at teacher training college and a lot younger. <laughs> well certainly Barry is it's there. Scary, isn't it? Yes, it is scary. We are going to take you on a journey around the country this time to discover some more of England's quirky customs beginning in the county of Gloucestershire with house wassailing. Anglo-Saxon tradition dictated at the beginning of each year, the Lord of the Manor would greet the assembled multitude with the toast, Was hail! Meaning, be well or be in good health. To which the followers would reply, Drink hail! Or drink well. It's likely that such celebrations were being enjoyed many years before Christianity began to spread throughout Britain. Several types of wassailing evolved. The house visiting wassail involved a group of singers carrying their bowl from house to house, singing a song on each doorstep and having their bowl filled with hot spiced cider or ale by the occupants, who were then assured of good health for the coming year. In 1979, the song collector Gwilym Davis met a man in a Stroud pub who described groups going around the top end of the town around 1914 with a decorated wassail bowl in which they collected money. He also sang to Gwilym a snatch of a wassail song. It was discovered that there were a number of wassail songs from various parts of Gloucestershire. So it was decided to restart a wassailing tradition in Stroud. From quite modest beginnings, it has quickly grown to an event that now attracts several hundred participants and occupies multiple locations throughout the town and beyond. The wassail takes place in Stroud on the second Saturday of the new year. The day starts with entertainment throughout the streets from Morris dancers, mummers and others. And I'm sure some of you have been dancing and enjoying the event. The wassail takes place in Stroud. Oh, sorry, repeat. Then a procession leads the assembled crowd to the front of Stroud, the Stroud subscription rooms. They knock on the door and demand admission. The door is opened by the master of the house, the town mayor. And abroad, a kind of mock bull carried on a stick enters to chase all within chase out or within the master then invites the wassailers inside for beer and cake the day ends with the wassail revels a variety of entertainment featuring dancing drama storytelling and much else here is the wassail song the tune is the one collected by Gwilym davis but the words are from a number of local sources so this is the Stroud Wassail, Waysail, Waysail as it's pronounced down there, um, which I, although I've been singing it for some time, actually got to sing it with the Waysailers the, for the first time a couple of years ago, the, I think the last time that the Stroud Waysail was held before Covid. So this is it, um, it's got some interesting rhymes in it. See if you can spot what, what rhyme is coming in some of the verses and do join in with the chorus, which is the first bit that I'm going to sing. Away sail, away sail, all over the town. Our bread it is white, and our ale 
it is brown Of all it is made from some apple in tree And the wassail in bowl will drink unto thee Come butler and fill us a bowl of the best We hope that your soul in heaven may rest but if you should bring us the ball of the small, then down tumbles butler, bowl and all. And here's to the master, and to his right eye, may God send our master a good Christmas pie, a good Christmas pie, as we may all see, and the wassail in bowl, will drink unto thee. Here comes, we sail, we sail all over the town. Our bread it is white, and our ale it is brown. Our bowl it is made from some apple in tree. And the wassail in bowl will drink unto thee. Well, here's to the master, and to his right leg, May God send our master a jolly fat pig, a jolly fat pig, as we may all see, and no wassail in bowl will drink unto thee. And here's to the master, and to his right hip, may God send our master a good flock of sheep, a good flock of sheep, as we may all see. And the wassail in bowl will drink unto thee. Oh, we sail, we sail all over the town. Our bread it is white and our ale it is brown. Our bowl it is made from some apple in tree. And the wassail in bowl will drink unto thee. Now here's to the master and to his right arm. May God send our master a good crop of corn, a good crop of corn, as we may all see, and the wassail in bowl will drink unto thee. And here's to the master, and to the dame, we hope that next year they will serve us the same, Serve us the same as we may all see, and the wassail in bowl will drink unto the last chance. We sail, we sail all over the town. Our bread it is white and our ale it is brown. Our bowl it is made from some apple in tree, and the wassail in bowl. Will drink unto thee. Stroke wassail. I think we need to have some someone with a Gloucestershire accent singing that, so you can really get the the sheep. Would be what sheep sheep. I will ask Brian. He's the boss. He's the, he's though, the man. He? And I forgot right. to get, close the screen share that time. I'll try and remember next time so you get the full glory of me on your screen. On the oh. other hand, maybe I'll just leave it as it is. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> right. From Stroud, we travel into the Midlands to Buckinghamshire and the Olney Pancake Race. Shrove Tuesday is the day before Lent in the Christian calendar. The day when the parishioners were shriven by confessing their sins in church at the shriving service. It was also the day on which the, in which all the fattening ingredients in the house were used up so that people were ready to fast during Lent. The fattening ingredients, as you well know, most, for most people were eggs and milk. A very simple recipe to use these up was to make pancakes. Now I wonder how many people actually made their pancakes this year. I always think it's a we fun did. thing to make and I, it's quite quite sad that it's so simple and yet there you go you buy pancakes from the supermarket there you go. Anyway in Buckinghamshire the only pancake race dating back more than 500 years to 1445 is held on Shrove Tuesday. 
The course is 415 yards long and is run from the marketplace to the church. Participants must have lived in Olney for at least three months and be at least 18 years old. They must wear the traditional costume of a housewife, <clears throat> right? including a skirt, apron and head covering and carrying a frying pan containing a pancake. Amazingly, all the women in this particular uh, photograph seem to have uh, gone to the same shop to buy their, their aprons and their headscarves and so on. Oh, I, I would know, of course, no. They're being sponsored by the local um, estate agents and they have been for some years now, so they all wear the same kit. At exactly 11.55, the church warden says, toss your pancakes, are you ready? And then rings the pancake bell to start the race, which is hotly contested by the runners dashing through the town streets. The winner on crossing the line must toss her pancake and is then greeted by the verger with the traditional kiss of peace. The origins of the race are uncertain. But one story tells that a harassed housewife, hearing the shriving bell, dashed off to church, still clutching her frying pan containing a pancake. The race continued through the centuries, and although it may have lapsed many times, it was never entirely forgotten by the people of Olney. After a lapse during the Second World War, it was revived again in 1948 by the vicar of Olney, Canon Ronald Collins. While clearing out a vestry cupboard, he came across some old photographs of women running with frying pans. Fired with enthusiasm to revive the custom, he called for volunteers, resulting in 13 runners appearing on Shrove Tuesday that year. The race immediately caught the public imagination and the people of Olney set out to make this ancient tradition a day of fun and festivity. And in Hitcham, we have annual pancake races, and I'm sure I've got pictures of my mother running, just like the 1950s one there, tossing a pancake, and that was down in the south. But this is what I find particularly interesting about the Olney event. The race has been linked since 1950 with the town of Liberal in Kansas, USA, where the townspeople started their own pancake race tradition after seeing photographs of the Olney event. The two towns compete on a timed basis, the fastest runner being the overall winner. Liberal is currently in the lead, having won 30 times to Olney's 38. 38 times to Olney's 30. And the last time the race was because of COVID was run, I said, oh, who won? And it was Liberal again. So there you go. Following the race, there is a shriving service held at the church where the participants in the race receive prizes and the congregation sing some of the only hymns written in 1779 by John Newton and William Cowper. Olney's a lovely place, I like Olney. <clears throat> Barry's going to sing a song called Toss the Pancake High. And I'm going to stop the share this time. So you should be able to see me now on your, your full screen or in the gallery or something. So if you want to pin me or um, do something, I don't know what you do. Anyway, this is, um, <laughs> this is a song called Toss the Pancake High. And uh, it's, it's about that, basically. And the chorus is the first bit as usual. So it goes like this. Toss the pancake high, run the race to Olney Town. Toss the pancake high on Shrove Tuesday holiday. Toss the pancake high, run the race to Olney Town. Toss the pancake high on Shrove Tuesday holiday. Ring, ring the pancake bell, Shrove Tuesday's here and all is well. For the race that's been run for hundreds of years has been happening again today. Mix up your eggs and milk and flour for a batter that's thick and strong. Cook it in the pan, toss it if you can, it must last the whole race long. Toss the pancake high. Run the race to Olney Town. 
toss the pancake high on Shrove Tuesday holiday. In the streets of Olney Town, folks have come from miles around for the race that's been run for hundreds of years and it's happening again today. We're gathering now in the marketplace in their aprons, skirts and shawls. The women, the women of Olney are ready for the race, are ready to give their all. And toss the pancake high, run the race through Olney Town. Toss the pancake high on Shrove Tuesday holiday. Toss your pancakes, are you ready? Off they go, so swift and steady in a race that's been run for hundreds of years and is happening again today. Run through the streets to the cheering of the crowds and toss it up once more. Virgis kiss for the winner of the race as she stands at the old church and door. And toss the pancake high, run the race to Oldie Town. Toss the pancake high on Shrove Tuesday holiday. Ring, ring the pancake bell. Shrove Tuesday's here and all is well For the race that's been run for hundreds of years Has been happening again today And now in the church there are hymns being sung And the only people pray For peace and forgiveness, health and strength On only Pancake Day Toss the pancake high Run the race to only town Toss the pancake high On Shrove Tuesday holiday Toss the pancake high, run the race to Only Town. Toss the pancake high on Show Tuesday holiday. Oh, yeah, the Only Pancake Race. Thank you. Nice to do the screen. Thank you very much. Back to our screen share. Here it comes. Hurrah! There we go. Leaving Only, we travel to North Yorkshire. To the annual ceremony of building the Whitby Penny Hedge. In a unique custom, the Penny Hedge or Horngarth at Whitby is planted in the estuary of the Upper Harbour on the east bank of the River Esk. It must be completed by 9am on Ascension Eve and must be strong enough to withstand three tides. The hedge is woven from hazel and willow and with, a strong, and with strong stakes driven into the mud using an ancient mallet. The legend has it that it is planted in penance for a crime that took place in 1159 in the forest of Eskdale side in the manor of Filing. Two, lo two local noblemen and a gentleman friend were out hunting. The hounds found and attacked a boar, which took shelter in a hermitage where it died. The hermit prevented the hounds mauling the carcass, but when the hunters arrived, they were so angry that they attacked the hermit. The hunters fled, but were returned to Whitby to stand trial. The hermit, now on his deathbed, suggested instead of the death penalty, a yearly penance of planting a hedge with sticks, cut with a knife, costing a penny. If the hedge, sorry, if the hedge did not withstand three tides, the lords would forfeit their lands to the abbey. It's a simple ceremony with two men building the hedge, and when it is completed, a horn is blown and the words, out on ye, supposedly what the hermit cried to the over-enthusiastic hunters, are shouted three times by the bailiff of the manor of Piling. Local historians past and present agree that the legend which supposedly gave rise to the custom is most likely an invention. A number of explanations are given. One, that the horn garth was an enclosure for animals, Another, that it was a landing place for boats. And yet another, that it was used as a coal yard. They all agree, however, that the Horngarth service 
is a very is very ancient and it was a form of tenure of payment to the abbot. The time of year for building the penny hedge is well chosen as Ascension Day falls 40 days after Easter and the tide is almost always low at the appointed time of 9am on that day as it falls between full moons. In 1981, because there was a very late Easter, the tide was full at 9am on Ascension Eve, so the hedge could not be planted. According to the legend, if it be full sea, the service shall cease, and the custom should have ended. John Hutton, who was the bailiff at the time, observed gloomily, the legend is firmly established. If the tide is wrong, we're relieved of our duties. If the tide was right and we didn't do it, I'd have to forfeit my lands, such as they are. <laughs> It'd be wrong to do it now. I expect the horn and mallet will end up in a museum. They didn't. He was out again the next year and the ceremony continues to this day by popular demand. The construction of the hedge begins at about 20 to 9 below the railings on Church Street. The spot is easy to find as there is now a wonderful wire sculpture of the hornblower above the traditional site of the Penny Hedge. Whether the legend is true or not, the Horngarth service is a single survival from, what, from the distant past and an important part of Whitby's heritage. And now uh -oh. I get to sing the Whitby Henny, Penny Hedge song. Um, <laughs> this is um, a song based all around that. And uh, one of the things I've discovered was that the, 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 the various components of the hedge have, have um, specific names. So um, you get um, the, the yethers are the, the bits of wood that are woven in between the stakes and stout strowers are the, um, the pieces of wood which hold the, the, uh, the hedge up at the ends, the, 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 the supports of the, of the hedge. So um, those names come into the song. I'm going to stop the share so that I'm now hopefully on my screen in front of you. So this is the, uh, the Whitby Penny Hedge song. Here we go. <laughs> Bright the morn, blow the horn, build up the penny hedge. The waves will not topple it, though storm and wind may rage. Out on ye, out on ye, out on ye, the bailiff cries. While the horn garth stands proud and true, and the ancient custom thrives underneath the whippy skies. Nine seas and hazel sticks we drive into the mud. Take care that they are straight and strong to stand up to the flood. Weave the yethers through the stakes, be sure to bend them tight. While the strout stowers planted well, we'll keep the hedge upright. Bright the morn, blow the horn, build up the penny hedge. Waves will not topple it, though storm and wind may rage. Out on ye, out on ye, out on ye, the bailiff cries, while the horn garth stands proud and true, and the ancient custom thrives underneath the Whitby skies. Every year we plant the hedge upon Ascension Eve, to pay our dues to those before, or so we do believe. Who caused the hermit dreadful wounds for nothing more than sport? This penance must be paid, or else our lands will come to naught. Bright the morn, sound the horn, build up the penny hedge. Waves will not topple in, though storm and wind may rage. Out on ye, out on ye, out on ye, the bailiff cries, while the horn garth stands proud and true, the ancient custom thrives underneath the whippy skies. Now when the tide it was too high, the service should have ceased, the duty was completed, obligations were released, but far from being ended, the tradition stays alive, and the penny hedge is firmly planted by the riverside. Bright the 
lawn, blow the horn, build up the fanny hedge. Waves will not topple it, though storm and wind may rage. Out on ye, out on ye, out on ye, the bailiff cries. While the horn guard stands proud and true, and the ancient custom thrives underneath the Whitby skies. So if you visit Whitby Town, come listen now to me. Go to the upper harbour, the penny hedge to see, and think of how those noblemen were sworn in days of old to carry out this service for the safeguard of their souls. Break the lawn, blow the horn, build up the penny hedge. Waves will not topple it, though storm and wind may rage. Out on ye, out on ye, out on ye, the bailiff cries, while the horn guard stands proud and true, the ancient custom thrives underneath the whippy skies. Underneath the whippy skies. Whippy Penny Edge. Dollar Gum. Looking forward to seeing that again next year at Whitby Festival and indeed the week after it because uh, as I was saying to Pauline earlier I've, I'm going on a, a, a quiet um, tour uh, next year we're doing it in the UK and guess what they're going to Whitby just after the Whitby Festival so I'm going back home and then going back up there again but that'll be nice won't it so the penny hedge and it was lovely to be in Whitby um, last year in June and see all these wonderful wire sculptures mm. all around the town. Mm. They are fantastic. They tell the story and history of Whitby so well. Mm. Definitely yeah. worth a look if yeah. you're going to Whitby Festival this year. Have a yes. look at them. They're good. Right. We move from Whitby and we travel <laughs> to the southeast of England. We're going a long way down, aren't we? Mm. To discover Devon's Tavistock Goosey Fair. The annual Goose Fair in Tavistock dates back to the early 12th century, when a Michaelmas Fair held every September the 29th provided the opportunity for animal trading, payment of rents and hiring of servants, as well as being a social event for the farmers' wives and daughters. This time of year is when geese are in their prime and farmers brought them to market ready for fattening for Christmas, hence the name Goose or Goosey Fair. Historically, the fair was mainly attended by the townsfolk, but the mix of visiting showmen, local miners and sailors from Devonport gave the fair a reputation for drunken behaviour and fighting. Mm. People from surrounding villages did not always travel to the fair, partly because of its reputation, but also because the journey had to be made on foot in the days before public road transport. However, from the 1850s to the late 1960s, the railways brought people in from the outlying villages and the town's platforms were often awash with litter and drunken stragglers by the end of the day. So sounds familiar really, doesn't it? Nothing changes. No. During the 19th century, Virtually all the inns in Tavistock would serve roast goose dinners and the meal became firmly associated with the fair. Although some unscrupulous people would take a day's lease on a vacant shop and serve cheap roast goose, which was in fact rabbit dipped in goose fat. The atmosphere at the old fair must have been amazing. It's said that on the night before the fair, the, uh, the moor would be dotted with glowing lanterns as flocks of geese were driven across the moor from the farms where they'd been raised. In later years, the geese were transported in carts, and it wasn't unusual to see a queue of 60 carts all waiting to unload their cackling and honking geese. The fair is now held on the second Wednesday of October, and the market traders come from all over the country to sell their wares and provide entertainment. A fun fair and hundreds of stalls and sideshows are set up in the centre of the town, <clears throat> which buzzes with excitement for the best part of a week. The more traditional side of the Goose Fair can still be found at the Tavistock Livestock <clears throat> Market or Centre, which continues the tradition with live geese and poultry being auctioned on the day itself. 
while some of the town's cafes and restaurants usually offer special goose themed menus. Hopefully the trade description act makes sure so. No rabbit. No rabbit. Definitely no, no. rabbit. The long-standing local joke that the Goosey Fair is not as good as it used to be is questionable, given the fact, given that the annual fair is continued popularity, always draws a huge crowd, whatever the weather decides to throw at the people of Tavistock. Barry is now going to sing. I'm going to sing the song Tavistock Goosey Fair, uh, which was written... Whoops, which was written by uh, C.J. Trithell back in 1912 as uh, a tribute to the people of Tavistock. There's a picture of the, the original music, two shillings. Gosh, it's worth, it, worth, it's worth at least two, Bob. Um, I've been singing this song for over 40 years and I was attracted to it as my family hailed from Devon. Uh, and this gives me an opportunity to sing in a kind of a Devonshire accent. Twere just a month come Friday last, Bill Chamfer down and me. A straight across old Darty Moor, the goosey fair to see. Well, us made ourselves right fitty, us graced and oiled as air. Then off us goes in us Sunday clothes behind old Bill's grey mare. I smelt the sage and onions half a mile from Richard's down. And didn't us have a blowout when us come into the town. And there us met Ned Anniford, Jan Steer and Nicky Square. And it seemed to we all dead must be at Tad stop goosey fair and it's all and where be gwen and oh what be a doing all there heave down your prong and stamp along to tabby stop goosey fair well us went and saw the effers and the osses and the yaws us went on all them roundabouts and into all the shows ah oh, but then it started raining and blowing in our face so off us goes down to the rows to have a dish of tay. Well, there was at a sing-song and the folks kept dropping in. And what with them that noticed, how <laughs> well, as had a drop of gin. And uh, what with one and t'other, well, as didn't seem to care. Whether as was to Belliver Tor or Taddy Stock Goosey Fair. And it's all and where be Gwen, and oh, what be a doing of there. Heave down your prong and stamp along to Taddy Stock Goosey Fair. Well, twere raining streams and dark as pitch when us headed home that night. And when us got past Merrival Bridge, the mayor er took a fright. Well, says I to Bill, be careful. You'll have us in the drains, says Bill to me. Ger bugger, says he, why haven't thee got the reins? Just then the mayor comes slap against a whacking girt big stone, er kick the trap to flip it, and er trotted home alone. And er when us come to reckon it weren't no use standing there, and has had to traipse home thirteen mile from Tavistock Goosey Fair, and it's all in the be Gwen, and er what be a doing out there? Heave down your prong and stamp along to Tabby Stock Goosey Fair. Tabby Stock Goosey Fair. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Heading further west, we travel from Devon into Cornwall for the fun and festivity of the Halston Floral Day. A few years ago. Oops. Hang on. Are you lost there? A bit there. Go back a bit. There, there we go. you go. Right. A few years ago, Barry and I were lucky to be in Cornwall around the time of the Halston Floral or Furry Day. And there's quite a few friends out there who were with us on that occasion. <laughs> so it's a bit of bring back Lars fond... Red Bull Stoke Morris, as <laughs> bring it Bring back fond memories. Right. Right, I get I dive digress right so the floral or furry day is held annually on the 8th of may unless it falls on a sunday or a monday when it moves to the previous saturday many of you might remember the 1978 hit version Ooh, of the floral dance by terry wogan there he is Hooray. Hooray. I'll tell. the song was written by the composer kate moss in 1911 following a visit to Halston on Flora Day. The people of Halston town have celebrated this day for hundreds of years. It is the day of the Feast of St Michael. 
one of the patron saints of Cornwall and the parish church in Helston. And Flora is the Roman goddess of flowers and spring. Whatever the origins, this pretty market town comes ablaze with flowers and greenery, adorning doorways, houses and shops as the whole town comes out to celebrate the furry. Central to the day are the dancers that wend their way through the streets and in and out of various buildings and houses known as the Helston Furry Dance. There are four in total, starting with one at 7am, which would have originally been for the Helston people in service in the large houses so that they could resume their duties straight afterwards. The dancers are traditionally dressed in their Sunday best and the men in shirts and tie and the women in summer dresses. At 10am it is the turn of the town's children to dance merrily accompanied like the other dancers by the town band. The children's dance involves over a thousand children aged from 7 to 18 all dressed in white. By this time the scene has been set for the main dance of the day which starts from the town hall at midday led by the mayor. The couples, the men in top hats and tails and the women in their best dresses and hats would not be out of place at Ascot. They spin and glide their way up the main street through the houses, churches and gardens to the floral day tune. The leading couple must be Houstonian born and bred and it is a great honour for that couple that are chosen. <laughs> the last dance and Helston feels that spring has been thoroughly welcomed into the community. All the dancers wear a buttonhole of Lily of the Valley, the Helston symbolic flower and a true spring bloom. The men wear it on one lapel and the women upside down on the other. There you are, that's tradition and customs for you. Obviously, beside the dance, there is a host of other activities during the day. The main street is full of life with many stalls selling local souvenir, souvenirs, Cornish crafts and food. There's also a big fairground and a real carnival atmosphere from dawn to well into the night. The pubs do a roaring trade, no surprise, as the brave sup the infamous strong beer, Spingo. A great time is had by all. Though there was a time, how surprisingly, when Victorians banned the Flora Day as being too decadent. Associated with the Flora Day is the Hall and Toe, a cross between a dance and a play, acting out various scenes from local history and legend, which feature in the Hall and Toe song. Local performers in fancy dress reenact St George slaying the dragon and Helston's patron Saint St Michael seeing off the devil. Robin Hood and his Merry Men get a mention, and even the Spanish Armada features in some of the lyrics of the song. A recent explanation is that Hall and Toe means the eve of the fattening time. And if you go to, if you, if you, if you look at YouTube and look for Hall and Toe on YouTube, it gets there's some great film of these, or great videos of these, this Hall and Toe happening and the, the, um, the acting out of all these different bits. And the song is basically the one I'm going to sing now. So this is the Hall and Toe song. I'm sure lots of you know it. So uh, do join in with the yeah. chorus. I can, I can hear you, you know. Actually, I can't, but I can pretend. It goes like this. Hall and Toe, 
jolly rum below, for we're up as soon as any day, oh, for to fetch the summer home, the summer and the May, oh, for summer is a come, oh, and winter is a gone, oh. Robin Hood and Little John are both going to the fair, oh, and we will to the merry green wood to see what they do there, oh, all for to chase, oh, to chase the buck and doe, hal and tow, jolly rumble, oh, for we're up as soon as any day, oh, for to fetch the summer home, the summer and the May, oh. The summer is a come on, and winter is a gone on. And where are the Spaniards that makes a great boast? Oh, they shall eat the grey goose feather, we will eat the roast. Oh, in every land, oh, the land where we go. Alonso, shall we rumble all, for we are up. As soon as any day, oh, for to fetch the summer home, the summer and the May, oh, the summer is a come, oh, and winter is a gone, oh. And as for that we knight St. George, St. George he was a knight, of oh, all the knights in Christendom, St. George he is the right, oh, in every land, oh, the land where e'er we go. Alonso, the only rumble hole, for we are up as soon as any day, oh, for to fetch the summer home, the summer and the May home, the summer is a come home, and winter is a gone home. But to a greater than St. George, our Helston has a right, oh, St. Michael with his wings outspread, the archangels of right, oh, who fought the fiend, oh, of all mankind before, and so, shall we rumble, oh, for we're up. As soon as any day, oh, for to fetch the summer home, the summer and the May, oh, the summer is a come, oh, and winter is a gone, oh. God bless our Mary Moses, with all her power and might, oh, and send us peace in merry England, both day and night, oh, send us peace in merry England, both now and evermore, oh, Alan. So, jolly rumble, oh, oh, we're up as soon as any day, oh, for to fetch the summer home, the summer and the May, oh, the summer is a come, oh, and winter is a gone, oh. Alan So. It's a really good sing, that, isn't it? No, Ralph. <laughs> right, we are now travelling north again. Back up north. We are to the village to visit the village of Haxey near Doncaster for the Haxey Hood game. The villages of Haxey and West Woodside lie in the area of North Lincolnshire known as the Isle of Axholm. The story goes that in the 14th century, Lady de Mowbray, wife of a local landowner, was out riding between Westwood Side and Haxey. As she went over the hill, her silk riding hood was blown away by the wind. Thirteen farm workers in the field rushed to help and chased the hood all over the field. It was finally caught by one of the farm workers, but he was too shy to hand it back to the lady, so he gave it to one of the others to take it back to her. She thanked the farm worker who had returned the hood and said that he had acted like a lord, whereas the worker who had actually caught the hood was a fool. She was so amused by this act of chivalry and the resulting chase that she donated 13 acres of land on condition that the chase for the hood would be reenacted each year. This reenactment over the centuries has become known as the Haxey Hood Game. Whether the story is true or not, the nobles mentioned 
did exist. Records show that the third Baron Mowbray would be the most likely candidate for the husband of the lady. And this would date the hood to about 1359 and would make it one of the oldest customs in England, surviving for over 650 years. The contest is held annually on the 12th day of Christmas, January the 6th, unless it falls on a Sunday, in which case it's held on the Saturday the 5th. In the weeks before the event, the 13 characters from the original story, The Lord and Chief Boggin, The Boggins and the Fool, tour nearby villages in order to collect money. The Fool carries a whip and sock filled with bran, with which he hits anyone who comes with, within reach. The game is played by locals, although anyone can join in. There are no official teams, but everyone tries to push the hood which is a leather tube stuffed with straw towards their favoured pub in the village of Haxey or West Woodside. The fool makes his traditional speech of welcome standing on an old mounting block on the village green in front of the church. And during this speech, a fire is lit with damp straw behind him. The smoke rises up and around him, and this is known as smoking the fool. This is a watered down version of the earlier custom, abandoned at the beginning of the 20th century due to its obvious danger, in which a more substantial fire was lit with damp straw beneath a tree. The fool was then suspended over the fire and swung back and forth until he was almost suffocated before being cut down and dropped into the fire from where he had to make his escape as best he could. The fool finishes his speech with the traditional words that the crowd chant along with him. They are, Oose again, Oose, tune again, tune. If a man meets a man, knock him doom, but don't hurt him. <laughs> After the speech, the fool leads the crowd to the middle of the field where the game is to be played. Before the main hood game, the 12 lesser hoods are thrown. These are simple rolls of sacking and the boggins form a circle around the field and the players, which are mostly children, struggle to get hold of the sack hoods and carry them through the cordon. After this bit of fun and a warm up, the crowd, warm up to warm up the crowd, the sway hood is thrown up into the air. The rugby type scrum or sway, to give it its official title, then converges on the hood and the game starts with earnest. The idea is to get the sway hood into one of the four pubs in either Haxey or Westwood's side. The sway makes very slow process, progress, process, progress, stopping quite often when it collapses in order to pull bodies out. At any one time, there are usually, usually around 200 people in the sway and about a thousand people watching. Games can last anything from a couple of hours onwards. Everything in the path of the sway goes down before it, including hedges, walls, and in the past, carelessly parked cars. I'm sure that doesn't happen now. <laughs> the game ends when the hood arrives at one of the pubs and is touched by the landlady or landlord from the front step. It is then hung proudly behind the bar until the following New Year's Eve. <clears throat> Barry's once again written a song. This time it's the Haxy Hood custom. Uh, yes, and the words of the full speech are the chorus. It's house against house, town against town. If a man meets a man, knock him down, but don't hurt him. Which is actually very important in that uh, particular game. They really do stop the sway and pull people out. Um, if they if they fall because uh, otherwise it could be extraordinarily dangerous. This is the song anyway. This is the uh, Axie Hood song. We watched the lady riding by across the fields under stormy skies. The wind was strong that winter's day, so strong it blew her fine hood away. We chased the hood over all the land, till young Tom caught it in his hand. 
He was still there, you know, hope was his to be returned. The lady's thanks, perhaps he learned. But he was too shy to give it back, and he passed it to his cousin Jan. Saying, take this to my lady gay, I cannot find the words to say. And when the hood had been restored, she said, Jack acted like a lord. But Tom was shy and though it was cruel, she said he'd acted like a fool. House against house, town against town, if a man meets a man, knock him down, but don't hurt him. House against house, town against town, if a man meets a man, knock him down, but don't hurt him. Strange goings on in Haxi, the smoking of fool on the village green. Better get down to Haxi, see what's going on there. The singing in the pubs of Haxi, cannons, barley, corn, and farmer's boy. There's crowds in the streets of Haxi, just to see what's going on there. House against house, town against town. If a man meets a man, knock him down, but don't hurt him. Leads the crowd at Haxi down to the field where the hood was lost. Sackwards are chased in Haxi, well, there's fun for the kids down there. Then the hood's in the air in Haxi, it's caught in a sway 200 strong, weaving its way around Haxi. Best get out of the way down there. House against house. Town against town, if a man meets a man, knock him down, but don't hurt him. Sun is setting on Haxi, but the sway rolls on to its favoured house. Will it be at West Woodside or Haxi? And how long till they get it there? Well, they're singing again down in Haxi, and the hood's on the wall of the conquering pub. The game is over in Haxi, but only for another year. House against house, town against town, if a man meets a man, knock him down, but don't hurt him. House against house, and town against town, if a man meets a man, knock him down, but don't hurt him. Haxi Hood. I'm not sure whether it happened this year or not. You were going to check. Oh, was. Well, I don't think it did. did. No. no. Covid put pay to it, I think. Yeah. However. In, in, yeah. In 2019, the game had to be revised as the part three pubs in Haxi had Ooh. all shut. Only the Carpenter's Arms and West Woodside remained open for business. But despite this, the game went ahead with the Haxi goal being the Buttercross instead of the pub and the West Woodside goal, the Carpenter's Arms as usual. Keeping the tradition alive was seen as paramount to the participants. After all, they say, it existed before the pubs did and will no doubt exist long after they have all gone too. Then we found out that the pub reopened yep. again. Um, There's at least one, so. if not two pubs open now in Haxi again, so it's all back to normal. But so. surprisingly enough, the year when the pubs in Haxi weren't open, it was the pub in West Woodside that won. So there you are. <laughs> well, there's a surprise. You'd never have thought it, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we return to the southern and western counties of England. To indulge, as I expect many of you have been in the last few weeks, in the custom of apple tree wassailing. The most widespread, famous and enduring wassailing custom concerns wassailing apple trees to ensure a good crop of apple crop by giving bread and cider to the good spirits of the orchard and driving out the evil spirits with rough music and gunfire. 
It is first mentioned at Fordwich, Kent in 1585, by which time there were already groups of young men who went between orchards performing the right for a reward. The Illustrated London News of January the 11th, 1851 reports that on 12th Eve in Devonshire, it is customary for the farmer to leave his warm fireside accompanied by a band of rustics with guns, blunderbusses, etc., presenting an appearance which at other times would be somewhat alarming. Thus armed, the band proceed to an adjoining orchard where is selected one of the most fruitful and aged of the apple trees, grouping round which they stand and offer up their invocations in the following doggerel rhyme. Here's to thee, old apple tree, whence thou mayst bud, and whence thou mayst blow, and whence thou mayst bear apples, you know, apps full, caps full, bushel, bushel, sacks full, and my pockets full too. Huzzah! You enjoyed that, didn't you? The cider jug is then passed round, and with many a hearty shout, the party fire off their guns, charged with powder only, amidst the branches. The old English tradition is still very much thriving today. The West Country is the most famous and largest cider producing region and among the most historic wassails are at Wimple in Devon and Carhampton in Somerset, both on the 17th of January, the old Twelfth Night. But there's also wassailing and or apple howling as it's sometimes known in the southern counties, for example, in Bolney and Rye in Sussex, Keston in Kent. Apple tree wassailing also takes place in Herefordshire and Worcestershire, and there are other more far-flung examples, such as the two that we have experienced in Dunton, Bedfordshire, and the one organised by Elephant Upper Pole at Wrighton near Coventry. The assembled crowd will place cider-soaked toast in the branches, sing and shout and bang drums and pots and pans and generally making a terrible racket, hitting the trees with sticks to stimulate the growth and there's often morris dancing involved and finally shots are fired from the shotguns or in one case a cannon though the branches through the branches to make sure the work is done. <clears throat> then it's time to sample the cider made from last year's crop of apples. I hope you've noticed you've got a former speaker there from the, from the Morris Federation sampling his cider somewhere in Gloucestershire, no doubt. <laughs> nice to see you, Steve. <clears throat> Here's an apple tree wassailing song. Uh, it's described as a good luck charm for the Devon and Somerset cider country to be sung either at the orchardman's door or in front of his trees. The lily white pin mentioned in the song is a silver bright pin, a reference to the finery thought proper for ceremonial occasions. This is the apple tree wassailing song. I'm sure lots of you will know this one as well. Oh lily, oh lily, oh lily white pin. Please to come down and let us come in. Oh, Lily, oh, Lily, oh, Lily, white smock. Please to come down and pull back the lock. For it's our wassail, jolly wassail. Joy come to our jolly wassail. How well they may bloom and how well they may bear. That we may have apples and cider next year. Oh, master and mistress, oh, are you within? Please to come down and pull back the pin, for it's our wassail, jolly wassail. Joy come to our jolly wassail. How well they may bloom, how well they may bear. That we may have apples and cider next year. Oh, there was an old farmer who had an old cow, and out a milker he didn't know how. He put his old cow all in his old barn, and a little more liquor won't do us no harm. Harm me, boys, harm, harm me, boys, harm. 
A little more liquor won't do us no harm, for it's our wassail. Jolly wassail, jolly come to our jolly wassail. How well they may bloom, how well they may bear. That we may have apples and cider next year. All oh, the wrinkles and the jingles and the tenor of the song goes merrily, merrily, merrily. All oh, the tenor of the song goes merrily, for it's our wassail, jolly wassail. Joy comes to our Johnny Russell. How well they may bloom, and how well they may bear, that we may have apples and cider next year. Hatfuls, catfuls, three bushel bagfuls, a little leaps under the stairs, if it hooray! <laughs> right. Our journey has taken us from Cornwall to Lincolnshire, from apple trees to pancakes, and from dancing through houses to smoking a fool. We hope you've enjoyed this trip and that you might be tempted, if you haven't done already, to revisit or to seek out some of these traditions. <laughs>